What's up guys, my name is Ace, and today we got a couple blog posts sharing a ton of information, basically everything on all of the class items for Modern Warfare 3, including every weapon in the game, which is what we're going to be covering in today's video, and then there was another blog post covering all of the other class items, I think I'll cover those in tomorrow's video, it's just too much to pack into one single video today. But diving right in, when it comes to unique Modern Warfare 3 weapons, we're not talking about the Modern Warfare 2 guns that are also carrying over into the game, but just for Modern Warfare 3 weapons, there are going to be 37 of these weapons, as well as 6 aftermarket parts. And those aftermarket parts are essentially conversion kits that turn a gun into basically a totally different type of gun. And let's just start going straight through the list here. We'll kick it off with assault rifles. In the beta, we had access to the MTZ-556, the MCW, and the SVA-45. On top of this, we're going to have access to the Holger 556, the DG 58, and the FR 556. And that's interesting because that's two three round burst guns. Both the FR 556 and the DG 58 will be three round burst. And I actually did run into the DG 58 in the campaign, but I didn't see any FR 556s laying around. Next for SMGs, we have six Modern Warfare 3 SMGs. In the beta, we had the Rival 9, Striker, and the AMR 9. Whereas at launch, we'll also have the WSP 9, which is the Uzi, the WSP Swarm, which is based on the Uzi Pro, and the Striker 9, which is a 9mm version of the Striker. After that, we have Battle Rifles, and in the beta, we have the MTZ 762 and the Bass B. At launch, we're also going to be having the Sidewinder, which was available in the campaign. Then for the LMG category, we have the Pull Me Out 762 and the Holger 26 from the beta, whereas at launch we're also going to have access to the TAC Eradicator, the DG58 LSW, and the Bruin Mark 9. Then for Marksman Rifles, we only had two in the beta, the MTZ Interceptor and the MCW 6.8. At launch, we will also have the DM56 and the KVD Enforcer. Both of these can be found in the campaign. Then with shotguns, all of these were technically available in the beta. We had the Riveter, the Lockwood 680, and the Haymaker, which you could access if you got the Juggernaut Recon. And then finally, for primary weapons in the game, for sniper rifles, we had the Longbow and the KV Inhibitor in the beta, and at launch, we will also have access to the CAT AMR. So that brings us to a total of 30 brand new primary weapons coming to Modern Warfare 3. This doesn't include any of the Modern Warfare 2 guns that are also going to be added. However, let's also have a look at our secondaries. And when it comes to the handguns, we had access to the WSP Stinger, the Renetti, and the Core 45 in the beta. Although the Core 45 was showing up as locked, there was a way that you could use that in the beta. And then on top of this, they're adding the Tier, I think it's pronounced, which is a brand new revolver that they're adding in. And that just leaves us with launchers, and there's only one unique launcher. This is the RGL-80, which was found several times throughout the campaign. This honestly isn't too surprising, though, because we're getting all of the Modern Warfare 2 launchers added to the game, and all of those already kind of cover the bases that you need covered for launchers. So that actually makes sense to me that there's only one brand new launcher that they're adding here. And then there's also two melee weapons, the Gutter Knife, as well as the Karambit. That brings us to a total of 37 weapons, and I was personally curious to see how this stacks up against previous Call of Duty releases. Is this a low weapon count, and are they relying on those Modern Warfare 2 weapons to really pad those numbers up? Well, it turns out I already had a spreadsheet made up from previous years, just looking at primary weapon count at launch from all the way back to COD 4. And when we look at the chart right here, Modern Warfare 3 on its own, not even considering the Modern Warfare 2 guns, is sitting at a very respectable primary weapon count there that's better than most other Call of Duty releases. Now, is it better than Modern Warfare 2? No, but Modern Warfare 2 was kind of an anomaly when it comes to the primary weapon count at launch. We had an insane number at 40 weapons. But that doesn't take away from the fact that Modern Warfare 3 is actually doing pretty great on its own when it comes to primary weapon count. Now one thing I do want to mention here is a lot of the weapon models they're using in Modern Warfare 3, they're kind of reusing them in multiple ways to go along with the platform system. So they'll take one weapon model, just change it up a little bit and call it a brand new gun, which in the case of creating a new version of the gun in a different category of weapons, I think that makes sense. Like having the Holger as an assault rifle, an LMG, and a marksman rifle, I personally think that's great. However, I can definitely see more of an argument when we're talking about changing up the weapon model a little bit and leaving it in the same class of weapons. So in the case of like the Striker versus the Striker 9, for instance, it's basically the same weapon model. They've done very little to change things, and I could definitely see an argument for that being sort of like lazy design. For me, as long as they perform very noticeably different, I don't really care too much. I care more about the performance of the gun rather than the look of the gun. But I did want to at least point this out, and this isn't the first time they've done it. I mean, we have the ISO 9 and the ISO 45 in Modern Warfare 2, for instance, so it's not really surprising that they're doing this. I just wanted to bring that up because I know many people will be bringing that up in the comments. In either case, let's move on to the next section here, which is the aftermarket parts. Like I said, there are going to be six aftermarket parts available at launch and then more added down the road. 
And in the beta, we had access to the Jack Annihilator bullpup conversion for the Pull Me Out 762, as well as the Jack Ferocity Carbine Kit for the Renetti, which turned it into full auto, and it was effectively the best SMG in the game, even though it was actually a secondary. But on top of this at launch, we're gonna have access to the XRK IPv2 conversion barrel, that's a mouthful, for the Core 45, which may or may not have been available in the beta. I didn't really level that gun up enough because I didn't figure out the way to use it until later on. But with this one, it says it introduces binary fire, which effectively doubles the rate of fire. Then they have the Broodmother 45 kit for the WSP9, so you can turn that into a 45. The Jack Heretic Carbine Kit for the MTZ762, which is a battle rifle. And then finally, for our first weekly challenge to unlock these aftermarket parts, we're gonna have the Jack Raven Kit for the MCW. And it looks like this is just converting it to 300, I assume 300 blackout. And they didn't really provide too many details aside from that. So there we go, those are all of the unique Modern Warfare 3 weapons, as well as the aftermarket parts that are gonna be coming within the launch window of the game at least. Now let's move on to some of the other things they talked about specific to weapons and weapon balancing. The first thing they mentioned here is they are going to be doing a complete rebalance of the Modern Warfare 2 weapons, which I am happy to see. I have been looking at this in the past, like hypothetically, if they didn't change things, what would that look like? Well, it does appear they're gonna be making changes to damage ranges, damage values, damage location multipliers, attachment value magnitudes, as well as attachment pros and cons for the Modern Warfare 2 weapons. So a lot of changes there, and I'm very happy to see that. I was worried they were just gonna be porting them straight over and not really changing much, and that could create some imbalances between the Modern Warfare 2 and Modern Warfare 3 guns. Next, something that's been really up in the air when it comes to weapons and the gunsmith is weapon tuning. Is it going to be returning in Modern Warfare 3 or not? And they finally confirmed in today's blog, no, there will be no weapon tuning whatsoever in Modern Warfare 3, including on the Modern Warfare 2 weapons. And honestly, I'm on board with this. I've talked about this in the past a little bit. I don't hate weapon tuning. I just feel like it adds a little bit of unnecessary complexity to the system that doesn't really add much to the gameplay experience, at least to me. And I think the amount of time and effort and resources that goes into creating that tuning system and then balancing it properly and rebalancing it throughout the year, I'd rather see that development time spent elsewhere where it could have a more significant impact on the gameplay experience. So while I do know that some people will be disappointed to hear that news, I for one am actually pretty happy to see that tuning is gone in Modern Warfare 3. And this brings me to the next thing that I'm very excited about. We already knew this was coming, but we didn't know how detailed it will be. This is the detailed weapon stats that we can access in the Gunsmith. And we got a little bit of a teaser here, just one screen showing the detailed stats while looking at one of the optics. And with this, we have access to damage, although it looks like it's only going to be the maximum damage. So you're not going to see the damage at like mid-range or long range here, as far as we can tell. But I'm glad they also separated headshots, upper torso, and lower torso here. But we have flinch values there, which is excellent. Range, we have effective damage range, minimum damage range, bullet velocity, rate of fire, recoil stats. So gun kick, horizontal recoil, vertical recoil. Nothing on center speed, I noticed. So we're still going to have to do a lot of hand testing when it comes to recoil. We also have stats on hip fire, minimum spread, maximum spread, flinch resistance while in hip fire rather than aiming down sight. We've got several mobility stats. We got movement speed, crouch movement speed, sprint speed, tactical sprint speed, and aim down sight movement speed. And then finally, we have access to handling stats like our aim down sight, reload quickness, sprint to fire, and swap speed. Although it is worth noting with sprint to fire, they only mention one sprint to fire value. And I assume that's gonna be from a standard sprint. It looks like it won't be displaying our tactical sprint out time as well. And in general, when I saw this screen, I was very happy. This is a really good collection of stats. It doesn't provide absolutely everything. So there's still things for me to be revealing to you guys. So you guys can see the true power of a weapon. But I think this is definitely enough here where you can build an excellent setup just looking at these numbers alone. Although some of that context will be missing and you may want to have to come check out my gun guides for that extra info. But then finally for this video, they also pointed out a filter option when looking at the detailed stats here. So you can actually filter attachments by the stats that they have an impact on, like mobility, recoil control, fire rate, damage. And I think this could streamline things as well. I do like the addition of this. It seems like you don't need to use this, but it's something where if you want that extra functionality, you could absolutely use that to streamline your attachment choices a bit better. And with that, that's gonna wrap it up for today's video. So far, things are looking really good here, at least to me. I'm quite happy to see the weapon count at launch is respectable on its own without having to rely on Modern Warfare 2 guns. The detailed stats look incredible. Weapon tuning is gone, which could be a pro or con depending on who you are, I'd say. 
And overall, I'm excited to see more about the aftermarket parts that are coming down the road with the game. Now, like I said, they also revealed essentially all of the other class items in a different blog post today. And unfortunately, I just can't squeeze that into this video. I'm going to be away tomorrow, so I'm actually just going to prep that video to be available tomorrow for you guys, where I'll talk about all of the perks and the vests and the equipment and score streaks, all of that kind of stuff. But in this video, I'd love to hear what you guys are thinking, at least about everything we learned in today's video, like the total weapon count at launch, as well as the fact that like we're not getting tuning and we do have those detailed stats. Are you generally happy with what we're seeing so far or not so much? Just let me know down below. If you enjoyed the video, a like rating is always appreciated. And don't forget to subscribe for more if you haven't already. I'll talk to you guys next time.